my Pete's Garage. Well, we're going to start our next engine build series. It's going to be another 440. And this one is going to be a little more mild than the other one we built. We don't have that goal of over 500 horsepower, but we're easily going to get four to 450 horsepower out of this engine. So what I'll do different in this series is, as I put parts in, I'll put the manufacturer and the part number. So if you're building a 440, uh, and you want to follow along and build one for yourself, you can at least know what parts I used. This engine is going to have a steel crank. Uh, we have cast iron heads instead of aluminum. Still going to have aluminum intake manifold carb, but at least you'll be able to get the parts. It'll be more common and it won't be as expensive. Since we're not going as high performance, we're going to save some money on parts. We're going to save some money on fasteners and save some money on different components just to show you how we can do that. So let's get started, take a quick look at the block and we'll put in a crankshaft. First we can look at is our casting part number 400-6630. This is a late 75 through 79 block 440 and I happen to know this particular block came out of a motorhome. Looking at the right side of the block looks like it says on March 24th of 76 Again, the same partner, casting part number 4663, it's a 440-3. It looks like it was 6 o'clock, first shift. The serial number pad on the lower right is really hard to read. It looks like it was hand stamped and a couple of numbers were stamped a couple times, but it looks like, it looks like, if it's not a 66, it's a 6C, which is really tough to tell. It's really difficult. I can't see much there. 197, 681 for sure. Now this is interesting about this block, and I really had a hard time getting to see or accentuate these letters, and it's very, very difficult to tell, and I tried to do this the best I can. Now, what it looks like, it looks like, it looks like either 8, 1, and the rest of it, I, I couldn't really decipher any of this. But the interesting thing here on this, on the, on the stamp pad, E, so this means that it had a cast crankshaft, but HP means high performance, which is kind of confusing. Ca high performance with a cast crankshaft. But the interesting thing right here is this Maltese cross. The Maltese cross on this block means that the bearings, the main bearings, were one thousandths undersize. So I got a special marking there. The 10, I'm not absolutely certain what that means. I know some of those markings there mean 10. The crank size, or the crank was undersized by 10, but it's really difficult to tell. But I do know what that multi cross is. Um, any of you Mopar guys you can tell us what that 10 is. Uh, leave a comment below, and we can uh, now we all know what the 10 means. Okay, machining to the block. Had the deck milled 1,000 just to clean it up. Power honed, uh, board and power honed, 30,000 oversize. Had the uh, soft plugs installed and the cam bearings. The cam bearings are Durabon PD17 cam bearings. I had a machine shop do that. The bottom side, all the mains were torqued up with a torque plate, and all the main bearings and the main caps, everything was line honed straight through. And before all of that was done, of course, we had the engine cleaned, degreased, uh, magna fluxed, check it for cracks, everything is good to go. Also, since the machine shop did all the machining and, and did all the line honing while they had it torqued up, I had them check the clearances for the crank because they also ground the crank. Now, since we're not going for high horsepower, we can get away with using the bolts on the mains instead of using the, the uh, main studs like I did in the other 440. Now even though I got the block back from the machine shop with the bearing caps and everything installed, I still take it apart, clean under all the bearing caps, and clean underneath the bearings and behind all the bearings. These are sealed power bearings, the uh, part number 4924MA20. And we'll just put the bearings in. Our thrust bearing goes in and it goes in the third position for the thrust bearing. And our last two. Before we put the crank in, I have to put the rear main seal in the back. I am using a Felpro gasket set number 260-1001 and the gasket goes in there, got to make sure you put it in there right the angle part kind of slopes backwards so that points towards the center this big part of the, of the uh, gasket point towards the middle and I'm also going to leave this offset by about a quarter of an inch so the gap of the of the seal doesn't fall inside the middle of the bearing makes it, makes it uh, 
easier to stop the leak that way. Now I'll just put some assembly lube on all my bearings here and we'll get our crank installed. Big thing is make sure you put some lube on the face of the bearing or the thrust bearing here on the face on both sides. Get lube on both sides of the thrust bearing and clean up on both sides like that. Alright, we'll put our crankshaft in. Now I was able to find a steel crankshaft in very, very good condition. So by finding a crank in good condition and having it machined to fit, saved about uh, 600 bucks. So you get a crank, have it machined to fit the bearings, make sure the clearances are right, and uh, you won't have to buy, not buy a $900 crankshaft. Put in all the bearing caps, make sure you clean underneath the bearing and the cap, and luckily all of the caps are numbered one through five. After all the caps are done, you just give it a quick spin to make sure everything's all right before you torque it down. Nice and smooth. Engine oil on all the threads, and then we torque down three even, three even steps to 85 foot-pounds. So it spreads freely. Final step, 85 foot pounds. And turn still turns nice and free. Nice and loose. Last thing I'm using that's a stock part is the cast rear seal holder instead of a billet one. And uh, yeah, it saves a few bucks here and there, but you know, it all adds up to a couple thousand dollars when you're done. So a uh, little bit of lube on here. A little bit of lube on the seal to make sure it doesn't stick on the crank. Set that in place. Like that. And put the side gaskets in. All I did was take this thing and clean it up real quick in a bead blaster. And if you do that, make sure that you soak that thing and you get it nice and clean. So the last thing you want are beads from your bead blaster to get in those holes and end up inside your engine. Bad news. Listen to me. Don't listen to me.
Prestige Worldwide. That's where it's at. Okay, tortilla's down to 35 foot pounds. Or I'm sorry, 30, 30 foot pounds. And this crank, the crank still turns nice and smooth. Awesome. Okay, the crankshaft is installed. Now we're going to move along real quick in this series, so please stay tuned. If it's your first time stopping by, click on subscribe and click on the little bell if you'd like to get a notification every time I upload a video. Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.